At this moment in economics class, we shall be looking at the concluding part of economic system, where we shall be looking at socialist economic system and mixed economic system. In our previous meeting, we look into capitalist economic system that we call market economic system, where we have private individuals engaging in an economy, where government is just to play a minimal role in that economy. So private individuals donate and dominate the economy in terms of the production as well as the distribution of goods and services. But today here we are looking at a socialist and a mixed. The definition, the features, like where the benefit, that is advantages we can come across in such an economy in such an economy or economies, as well as the problems associated with the socialist economy and the mixed economy system. Socialist economy system. This is an economy system where the means of production and distribution are collectively owned and controlled by the state. That is, in terms of uh, ownership of resources, the distribution and production, all these are done by the state, that is, the government. Government is the one in control and all the resources belong to government. So whatever they need in that economy, it is the responsibility of the government to provide them. We can also call the socialist economy centrally planned economy. That is, the economy is planned centrally, is planned by the state, by the government of that economy, or command economy. That is, the economy is commanded by the state, not private individual. So this type of economic system is handled by the government. Private individuals are not allowed to operate, unlike a capitalist economic system. We always say government has minimal role to play, but private individuals are the one operating. But here, yeah, only government, nothing like a minimal role of a private individuals. Examples of socialist economy are China, China, Soviet Union, Romania, Angola, and so on and so forth. These countries that we mentioned are countries that are practicing or that we can call socialist economies. Socialist economies. The features of socialist economy are number one. State ownership of means of production. That is, all the means of production are in the hand of the state. The state is the one that owns all the resources. That is, state is in charge of them. Unlike a social capitalist economy system, that resources are owned by individuals. So here, resources are owned by the state, that is, the government. Number two, no profit motive. In this economy system, the motive is not profit making, but to provide goods and services for the, for the citizen at affordable prices. But price mechanism is not playing key role in the system because government is the, char is the one in charge of production and government is producing goods and services in order to enhance the living standard of the people and not to exploit the people but to ensure that the people are enjoying that is providing social goods and services at, an, at affordable prices number three joint decision making individual decision making is not allowed in socialist economic system but decisions are made jointly, which implies that a central government is the one in charge of a decision making. They make decisions that will befit the citizen of, a, of that country. Number four, non-price competition. Here, they are not competing over prices, but prices are fixed at affordable rates for citizens so that each and everyone can have access 
to such goods and services. Number five, equitable distribution of income. Here, socialist economic system want to ensure equitable distribution of income by ensuring absence of gap between the rich and the poor so that the citizen can enjoy themselves. But in capitalist economic system, if government is not careful, this can create gap between the rich and the poor. But in socialist economic system, they try to, uh, to close the gap between the rich and the poor in order to ensure that resources are distributed equally or income are distributed equally. Advantages of socialist system. One, there is presence of centrally planned market. That is, in this economic system, the market is planned by the government. Whatever activity that is going to happen in such an economy, it is centrally planned. All what they need to see that the economy is moving forward, it is the responsibility of the government. So government plan in this economic system. So the plan is not in the hand of an individual, like capitalist system. Number two, presence of employment opportunities. So far, individuals are not allowed to have freedom of enterprise. That government is the only one that can engage in these enterprises. So in that case, there will be a lot of job opportunities for people to have. That is, it is the responsibility of government to provide jobs for the people in that socialist economy system. So in socialist economy system, once the government wants goods and services to be produced and working toward economic growth and develop, uh, development of the economy, then it implies that the government will channel the resources to the appropriate area by employing people that work, work toward the available resources in order to produce goods and services that move the economy forward. Number three, there is economic security. Economic security in the area of uh, job security and others. Here, there is job security. Government cannot just sack people anyhow. Unlike a capitalist economic system, that we understand that if you are not, if uh, an enterprise is not pleased with an employee, the employee will leave, or sack letter can come at any time in capitalist economy because their workers are are used to work moving the the system in the enterprise forward. But in socialist economy system, government it is the responsibility to ensure that each and everyone in the economy engages in one or one or thing that will ensure there is no crime. So in socialist economy system there is economic security. Number four, it ensures equitable distribution of income. When you say distribution of in the equitable distribution, we are referring to where there is no gap between the rich and the poor. The poor ones have access to what they need, and the rich ones have. So here, in socialist economy system, government will ensure that there is no war, there is no gap, and income are distributed. Where there is excess, government will take and take it to where there is a war, less, so that the, uh, everyone in the economy can have good living standard, unlike a capitalist system that creates gaps. Number five, there is no exploitation of consumers. Here, government is after the welfare of its citizen. So therefore, there is no room for exploitation of the citizen than to protect the citizen towards the development of the economy. Protecting the citizen, giving them what they need at the right time. Because government has taken the responsibility of producing the goods and services that are essential to the citizens. Number six, it ensures efficient utilization of resources. Here, private individuals are not allowed to handle resources. 
where we can have waste. But where we only have one authority in charge of all the resources. So a good manager or good management we ensure efficient utilization of available resources by channeling the resources toward what they need in that economy ensuring that the resources are not wasted unlike a capitalist economy system where a lot of resources are wasted despite that the capitalists understand they are still going to make their money by exploiting consumers Disadvantages of socialist system. Number one, it leads to state monopoly. It implies that where the economy is in the hand of a central authority, the central authority will become a monopolist in that state, which implies that it's only one single seller or single producer in that economy, producing commodities or services to the citizen. So here, there is no competition. And there will be a lot of waste in this situation because of absence of uh, other firms that can compete with the existing firm. So it's a problem in the socialist economy system. Two, there is absence of competition the implication is that so far they are not making profit they cannot compete with anybody but where there is competition new things will come but where there is no competition hardly new things will be established in that economy hardly we see quality in what they produce in such an economy so in socialist economic system it implies that the government gives what they like to the citizen, either they like it or not, because no firm is competing with them. Three, it slows down economic development. Socialist economic system slows down economic development in the sense that so far individuals are not allowed to operate, where there will be innovation, invention of new things. Only the economy will have development because it is only the government that is doing the whole thing. So if they don't have appropriate personnel or people that can do the, uh, uh, the development, that is bringing innovation, bringing ideas, then the economy will be growing at a slower rate. Number four. It has absence of alternative choice. That in this economic system, individuals are not allowed to have alternative choices. That is, you are restricted to a particular commodity in that economy. You cannot make a choice. So you don't have choice in this economy than to take whatever the government gives. Number five, it reduces individual initiatives. Here, if you are not in the authority, you cannot initiate, you cannot bring your initiatives into the system. So only those that are in power or that are in authority have the, uh, the, the, the power to initiate something. But as an individual that is just coming up or a subordinate, find it difficult to use initiative towards the economy. Unlike a capitalist system, we are individual initiatives are allowed. So you can use your talent here anyhow you like. But here, your talent will just be there. You are not allowed to use it. Number six, it creates room for laziness. So far we have said that in this economic system, it is the responsibility of government to provide jobs. So if they provide jobs for people and they are not doing it, government will not do anything. So those people in the offices, they are, they are just there, but they are not active. So far, they understand that government will want to sack them in order not to uh, increase crime rate in the economy. So socialist economicism does not allow people to engage in, in being creative, in being hard work, and so on and so forth.
mixed economic system. This is an economic system in which both the private and public ownership of means of production and distribution exist together in an economy. That is, in this economic system, we have private sector and public sector existing together. We are no one is controlling the economy except when government try to put in place the rules and regulations governing business enterprises. So in this economic system, we try to understand that the problem associated with capitalist system and problem associated with socialist system bring about mixed economic system in order to move economy forward. But today, there is no economy that is 100% socialist or capitalist. But most of the economy all over the world today, they have mixed economy. In capitalist economy, private sector will still dominate, but government is still playing crucial role towards ensuring that the economy is moving forward. While in a socialist system, private individuals are allowed to operate, but government role there is more than the one of a private. So in a nutshell, most of the economy today, they are mixed economy. We have, we have the existence of both private sector and public sector existing at the same time. Example of mixed economy, we have Britain, Nigeria, Egypt, and Mexico, Mexico and so on. This country that we mentioned are already in mixed economic system for long, unlike the previous one we mentioned. Example of this economy system are Britain, Nigeria, Egypt, Mexico, and so on. The main features of this economy system are as follows. Number one, joint participation. I've said that a mixed economy system, we have private sector and public sector. Nothing like a only private sector or only public sector. Here we have the two sectors existing at the same time. As private individuals are contributing toward economic growth and development of the economy, likewise the government, that is the public sector, is also contributing towards increase in production of goods and services. So we have joint participation in mixed economy. Two, freedom of choice. In mixed economy system, citizens are allowed to have choice. If you are not desire to patronize government goods and services, you are allowed to patronize private sectors in their own goods and services. So in order for each and everyone to have higher living standard. So in this economic system, we have private sector and public sector exist. There is freedom of choice. Then number three, economic freedom. Economic freedom can come in the area of uh, maybe seeking for employment or intention of establishing your own enterprise. If you are seeking for employment, you are not restricted to private sector or being restricted to public sector. You have freedom to either work with private sector or you work with public sector. But in terms of enterprise, you are free to engage in any economic activity of your choice. Once the activities you want to engage in does not jeopardize the rules or the regulation governing the enterprise. So it's a matter of ensuring that you obey the rules and regulation, not jeopardizing the economy or jeopardizing the industry. Advantages of mixed system, that is mixed economic system. Number one, encouragement of private initiatives. 
in mixed economy system where we have private sector and public sector the private sector is allowed to uh, to be creative to be initiator and so on so here as an individual that that, that, that has initiatives you are allowed to use your initiative toward the development of the economy once such initiative will not jeopardize the economy number two freedom of choice in this economy system there is choice making that each and everyone can make you can you are free to patronize any firm of your choice if you don't want to go to government government enterprise you are free to go into private enterprise but there is freedom of choice nothing like restriction that we have in socialist economy system number three equitable distribution of income here government too is trying to close the gap between the rich and the poor by focusing on distribution of income in private sector because private sector they try to create in, uh, unequitable distribution but government try to tax them one way or the other in order to distribute the income toward the poor one side so that at the end of the day equitable distribution will occur in the economy number four ensuring economic development mixed economic system allows private individuals to engage in the production of goods and services likewise government to engage in it by doing this there will be increase in production of goods and services not only that private sector will also try to be a uh, good inventor good initiator and so on so that there will be quality in what they are producing that can improve the economy leading into economic development number five ensuring job security private sector engage in the issue of our creation of job opportunity likewise public sector engaging in creation of job opportunity but government sector creates more than private sector because private sector will still want to employ capital intensive but government will want to engage in labor intensive so here there is still job security on the side of a public sector more than a private sector number six prevention of exploitation this economic system try to ensure that consumers are not exploited by putting in place consumer protection policies that will ensure that despite that we have private sectors handling the economy individual private sector should not exploit consumer so government tries to intervene by regulating the activity of private sector so that the sector will not jeopardize the economy on the long run all these are some of the benefits associated with mixed system disadvantages of mixed system despite that we have discussed the advantages of this system mixed economic system we can still observe some problems associated with the system such as number one inequality of wealth in mixed economic system government find it difficult to close the gap between the rich and the poor so there is still existence of inequality of income so the rich continue to be richer and the poor ones continue to be poorer so in this system there is still inequality of uh, wealth number two corruption and mismanagement corruption exists in this economy system mostly particularly when the private sector want to get something from the public from the government they bribe those in the authority in order for them to have access to what they need at the end of the day they will ban this thing on the citizen 
whereby the citizen will not enjoy what the, the, the role of private sector in the economy. So the corruption in the system does not allow the efficiency being expected from the private sector to exist. Not only that, mismanagement, particularly on the side of public sector. When government allocates resources to its enterprises, those enterprises mismanage the resources. The fail to channel into the appropriate area that can move the economy forward. So, at the end of the day, if this mismanagement come back to this growth of the economy, that is, the economy will not move forward as a result of a mismanagement of a fund. Number three, profit rather than welfare. A mixed econo a mixed economy system. We have private sector and public sector exist together. Private is expected to be making profit, but the public sector is expected to be behind the welfare of its citizens. But here, the public sector is not performing its role, its role which implies that public enterprises are not performing their key role in the mixed economy system. But private sector still ensuring that profit is still existing in what they are doing, that is, making profit every time. But in public sector, welfare is not their main objective again. So at the end of the day, we discover that in this economy system, public sector is not performing its key role in the economy. Number four, exploitation of labor. Both the private sector and public sector exploit labor. In private sector, they employ, they pay peanuts because they discover that in the, in, in the economy, there are a large number of people outside looking for jobs. So the existing labor in their enterprise or in their enterprise, they fail to pay them adequately by paying them a peanut because they discover that there is no work outside. Not only that, government sector too fail to play its own role in the economy by paying labor adequately. But what they do, they exploit labor, they don't pay them when their salaries are due. Not only that, labor fail to even enjoy the role of government in the economic system. So therefore, this economic system too is not playing its own role toward economic growth and development that is on the side of uh, labor because when labor is not motivated how, they are, how will it have an increase in production not to talk of efficiency in what we are doing but the last one lack of efficiency well on the side of a uh, private sector some things are still efficient while some are not but Efficiency is not exist is not existing as been expected in public sector because they lack profit making. No motivation in this. As a result of this, government decide to lay up its hand from some of the enterprises given into private sector to handle. So as a result of what inefficiency existing in public sector. So in this economic system. We hardly see full efficiency. So efficiency is existing on the side of a private sector, while on the side of public sector, there is no efficiency. Examples. Number one. Which of the following statements describes a mixed economy? A. The government and the private sector interact in solving the basic economic problems. B. The invisible arm solves the basic economic problems. C. The government produces and distributes all the goods and services. D. Society answers that what, how, and for whom questions only through the market system the right answer is a the government and the private sector 
interact in solving the basic economic problems. A is appropriate because in mixed economy system, we are talking about private sector and public sector. But B cannot be appropriate because invisible hand implies capitalist economy system. So in mixed economy, we are not only talking about capitalist, but we are talking about private sector and public sector. C. The government produces and distributes all the goods and services. Here, it's not specified if it's a socialist or mixed economy system. Then D is not talking about economic system, but talking about fundamental economic system. But it's talking about true market system. But the implication is that it's talking about capitalist economy system. So the right answer is A. The government and the private sector interact in solving the basic economic problem. Question 2. Collectivism refers to the system of management of state enterprises in A. A. Mixed economy. B. Cooperative organization. C. Capitalist economic system. D. Socialist economy. The right answer is D. Socialist economy. A cannot be the right answer, mixed economy, because collectivism is talking about uh, ownership of enterprises or the means of production to be collectively owned and managed by a state. So mixed economy has both the private and the public sector existing together. Cooperative organization, this is not an example of economic system. This is a business ownership, that is under business organization. The C, capitalist economic system, is not talking about collect collectivism, but it's talking about individualism, where individuals are allowed to operate. Why D, socialist economy, is talking about collective ownership of resources, which is managed and controlled by the state, that is, the government. So the right answer is D. Question 3. A major disadvantage of a socialist economy is that A. Corruption is rampant. B. Consumer sovereignty is lost. C. Income inequality is entrenched. D. There is high, le high level of unemployment. The right answer is B. Consumer sovereignty is lost. A. Which is corruption is rampant. Truly, we can have that in socialist economy. But we don't see that as a major problem. We can have corruption in socialist, in capitalist, likewise in mixed economy. B. Consumer sovereignty is lost. That is A. Consumer, consumers do not have freedom. They are restricted to a particular commodity or essential services. So they cannot make choice, but what they do, they take whatever the government gives. C. Income inequality is entrenched. We can have this in capitalist economy system. We can have it in socialist economy system, but partially in socialist. So here is not a major disadvantage. There is high level of unemployment. This can exist in capitalist system. We can also see it mixed system. But in socialist, we can still experience this, provided if the government fail to know is its responsibility in the economy. So from the four options, 
B is the appropriate answer. That is, consumer sovereignty is lost. Question four. In a mixed economy, decisions to produce are taken by A. Men and women acting in their own best interest. B. The government acting in the interest of the country. C. The market women, the labor unions, and the employers' association. D. Private individuals, organizations, and the governments. The right answer is D. Private individuals, organizations, and the governments. Option A, which says men and women acting in their own best interest, is not talking about economic system. We, are, uh, we have individuals as well as the government. So it's more or less focusing on individuals. So in mixed economic system, we don't have men and women only. B, the government acting in the interest of the economy. A mixed economic system is not only the government acting in the interest of the economy. D, the market women, the labor unions, and the employer association. This one is more or less association. And we are not talking about association in mixed economy. So we are talking about production and distribution, where the resources are handled. Is it by private or by public? But D says private individuals, organization, and the government. That is, decision making of goods and services are taken by private individual organization and government. So the right answer is D.